So this was posted in 2X chromosomes, and I've seen this problem pop up a few times, and I think that we do need to consistently have this discussion so women don't internalize these issues as their own. This is not our issues. This is their issues. She just titles it Men with Erection Problems. She says, hi, this sounds really stupid, but I've been dating several men lately who have had some erectional problems during X. For example, they did not stay hard or did not manage to get hard again. They were all 30 to 35. I do not use birth control, so I always use, um, I always have to use a condom. While it's also annoying for them that they do not stay hard, I'm also starting to feel insecure about it. It has been really getting into my head that somehow it's me. So I was wondering if there are other women with this experience, maybe it's more common than I think it is. I think it is getting to be more common, because, and I even made a video about this. I don't think that a lot of these people are taking care of themselves. I don't think that their diets are up to par. I don't think that their internal, um, their internal organs are working that well. Most of the time, well, it, it's a blood flow problem. And if that is happening down there, that is the canary in the coal mine, that there may be some heart issues or some cholesterol issues or some blood pressure or some diabetes or something else that is going on. And these old folks' diseases are hitting the younger people um, because they're not taking care of themselves. And one of the videos that I just recently did talking about the mom to wife pipeline is drying up. And that means that these ED problems are going to keep on happening because a lot of these men are not able to take care of them. Themselves. They're barely able to wash their own butts by themselves, let alone fix their own food. So I think that we're going to see this more and more. And I don't want women to internalize this as a female problem. This is the dudes. Now, in the in this comment section for 2X chromosome subreddit, so this is a woman's subreddit, there are a lot of men in here weighing in. But I'm still going to read some of these because this is from the men's, I mean, this is a man's problem. The pooter says, 44-year-old man here that has had this issue on and off for a little while now. It is not your fault and it's way more common than most people think. There is a strong tie between a glorious peen, a peen and a man's worth that goes, that goes for genetics, stamina, performance, etc. It's, it's silly, but that doesn't make it not a reality for many men. The truth of it is there are many, many factors that go into the ability to get hard and stay hard. Some physical, many mental. Some men climax too fast, so they try and distract themselves. And in the stress of that, in the moment, the opposite result winds up happening. Some men have heart conditions or are out of shape. I know my abilities improve significantly after adding regular cardio exercise to my life. Pressure is also a factor. I was once in a strong, emotionally abusive relationship and was very vocally shamed whenever it happened to me. Not a fetish of mine in the slightest. It was just cruelty to the point where I couldn't perform at all anymore, which just spiral things. It took me a long while of being with my current partner, whom is a wonderful, caring woman, before I was able to perform penetra penetrative acts. She was patient and loving, and I'm not afraid to admit, the first time I was able to, I cried afterwards, and I was so relieved that she held me tight and understood the relief I felt. The thing, the thing I always held on to is that I don't really have much time or patience for masculine normative normative BS. I don't derive my worth from my pain. And if I have an off night, that doesn't mean the fun has to stop. I was given many tools, and by God, my wife will have a smile on her face. That was very um, to the point. I'm glad that he knows that and, and is caring about his wife's needs as well. Um, so like this man says, there are probably there are lots of issues and I'm glad that he added that he had to have better cardio health. Um, VS says, man, that was a good read. Like this is why I doom scroll Reddit when I should be adulting. Good words, I'm certain they will find someone who needs to hear them. Yes, this, those are some good words. Um, this person says, thank you for this. My husband is experiencing some softness lately and I was starting to feel a little insecure about it. You've pointed out some great things about it though that I can use to support him through it. Death Cat for Cutie says, adding some extra intimacy into sessions really helps me. Cuddling, kissing, anything to take the pressure off and get me back into the right mindset. Not solely worrying about what she's thinking 
It's very likely in his head. It had um and has nothing to do with you, my friend. So here's another man. Um, Donna who says, thank you for this. As a male in the age range OP mentioned, I've had many times where I just couldn't perform. Not a single one of those times was it because I wasn't attracted to my girlfriend. She is incredible inside and out. All that being said, I don't think most women realize the amount of pressure that is placed on the situation, even if they haven't expressed ex expectations for intimacy. The pressure that if I can't stay um, erect, I then I am less of a man. The pressure that if I can't get it up, she'll think I'm not attracted, don't like her, am thinking of someone else, already got it from somewhere else. All of these, I'm sorry, all or these things, plus the ones you mentioned are all barriers to keeping that erection. Personally, I have ADHD and get distracted. I live in my head, so I struggle to be and stay present in the moment. When I notice my mind shifting, drifting, trying to get it back, forces more mental in, um, energy onto that thought and lose it. That coupled with how hard it is for me to climax is a killer. Like you, I've accepted that I just may not perform that night, but my partner will be satisfied one way or another. It was more, uh, far more often with my last partner that I would just ask, are you good? And stop when she said yes. And then things ending naturally. And with that, I'm going to end that there. I'm glad that some people have, some men have the self-awareness to know and understand that even if they're having some issues that they still just take care of their ladies. Great. Very self-aware, very demure, very cutesy. I like it. All right, y'all. Like I said, I was just doing this as just putting it out there that we need to not internalize their issues. Many of these issues go hand in hand with the hygiene issues, the not cleaning up, all of that. They just need to take care of themselves better. Um, but it's not your fault. Take the pressure off yourself. Don't let this impact your self-esteem or confidence in yourself. This is not a you problem. All right, join the conversation. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. I really wish people would leave child-free people alone. Let these folks make the decisions that they want that best fits what they want for their lives. Debating them isn't going to make them have kids once they are staunchly in the child-free category. And even if they were halfway, stop trying to push them over the edge. All right, so this was posted in the Child Free subreddit. She says, apparently marriage is only for people who want kids. The woman and her husband are both 25. She says, I've been married to my husband for one and a half years now. We went to a family dinner at my aunt's house with my in-laws, my parents, and my sister. It was all fun and games until my aunt's mouth farted out. When are you two having kids? You have been together for a long time now. I looked at my aunt funnily and told her, we wouldn't be having any and that this has had been known for years. I've been saying this since I was a child myself. A discussion then broke out. She said that there was no point in our marriage if we didn't want to have children and that we were still young and our opinions would change. To my surprise, my mother-in-law and my mother sided with my aunt. The two of them want to have grandchildren and that is unfair. I'm sorry, that it is unfair. I grew up with a lot of babies around me, so I know what kind of work goes into it and how stressful it makes life. I also have to admit that I detest children. She detests children. Why does anyone want anyone that detests children to have babies? Stop trying to make babies and children come up, with a, come up in a household where parents detest them. That sounds terrible. All right, she, so she detests children. She says, my husband explained everything to them again and they still started talking about how we were wasting our lives. We then got up and went home. Now I am bombarded from all sides with messages that we are disrespectful and that we owe our parents grandchildren. One thing has become clear to me. I will never say anything on the topic again. And if I have to, I will walk away from the conversation. I don't owe anyone sh stay out, stay away from my uterus. Y'all. Stop trying to police women's uteruses, or is it uterus? I don't know. Stop trying to police women in their bodies. It is not your job. Women can make decisions for themselves. Imagine the baby that is born to a woman that says, I detest children. She has the right to do with her body and her life what she wants. Stop this madness. Child-free women should have the opportunity to live how they want 
women who want children should have the opportunity to live how they want. And people that want to have one child, two ch- whatever, leave these people alone. Now, this woman does not even want to entertain this conversation. She feels like people jumped on her, which they did. They're putting pressure on her. How are you going to debate a woman what to do with their body? It, it just literally makes no sense. Wrestling woman says, play along and say they're right. And now you're getting a divorce. Remind them this is their wish and you're doing what they want. They're at fault for you two splitting up. Watch them drop, try and backtrack. Um, the OP says, my husband and I are crying of laughter over here. Perfect response. Thank you. Wrestling woman says, if you ever use it, let us know how it goes. Um, so then everybody else is like, this is hilarious. This is brilliant. Okay, let's go. See. Bubble says, I'd go no contact for a while. You and your husband have your own place and you're independent, right? The family has no say on what you two do with your lives. I'm about to get married and they know we don't want to have kids. They also know he's had a vasectomy. I'm so sorry they attacked you this way. It's rude and unnecessary. Lots of love. You are definitely not disrespectful. I think it's quite the opposite. And then the OP says, thank you, dear. We went no contact with our mothers for a while. We only talked to our fathers and siblings. Even they are annoyed on our behalf. I think they are bitter because they won't have the Kodak moments with grandkids. Lots of love back. So because these mothers were so pushy, now their children are not talking to them. Imagine that. It's like you're going to lose out on children because you think that you get to order your children around. People need to stop this mess. Um, Bubble says, I hope it becomes more normalized to not want kids. Where I live, most people have or want kids. The OP says, my family is originally from the Balkans, and I guess that's where their breeding mentality stems from. Um, Bubble says, Indiana. So many people just have them and don't think twice. And we have a ton of single parents and teen moms. Um, And then the OP says, well, in my family, nobody has under three and most of them suck at parenting verbally and, I'm sorry, verbal and physical abuse. That's kind of terrible. That's what happens when people just willy-nilly have kids and they don't really want them. They just do it because it's just what you're expected to do. I just thought that this was interesting, especially as we're um, going into this contentious political season where people are really trying to pressure childless cat ladies to do whatever or talk bad about folks. Just stop. Just stop. Let these people live how they want to live. It's easier that way. That way, you know, the children that are born are born to parents that actually want them and not people who are pressured to have them or just had them on an oops. Let let kids be born to parents that really want to have kids. All right, join the conversation, y'all. If you're childless, if you're child-free, if you are a parent, live how you want. Join the conversation. Let me know what you think about this. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. Hi, y'all. J.D. Vance here. The vile Democrats have said that my platform is disconnected from the interests of real people. They've also said that I'm a stooge for the 1% with no ideas. Well, that's not true, and it's mean to say. So here are some real constituent letters from real people. Dear future VP Vance, a Haitian illegal broke into my house and ate my dog between two slices of Wonder Bread. He was wearing nothing but a sinister cape and a top hat. He escaped on a skateboard powered by dark magic before the very brave police arrived. Please help me. Signed, Jim Springsteen. And here's another. Dear Mr. Vance, an illegal immigrant from China broke into my house and taught my parakeet Mandarin. Now it says things I can't understand instead of the usual cheeps and peeps. Please let AI relieve me of my job so I can stay home and vigilantly patrol my borderline. Signed, Irene Placeholder. And here's yet another one. Dear Mr. Cool, I mean Mr. Vance, sorry, the nickname I have for you slipped through my pen. Anyway, I need to report a crime. A south of the border type outlaw broke into my McMansion and drank my cat like a twist off Gatorade. Then he convinced my goldfish to terminate its pregnancy. These problems will never stop unless you turn the border into a mode of fire. Signed, First Last. Just to be clear, this woman is messing around with this man. She posted this in the Tinder subreddit and says, this guy said he was 19, aware of the cheaters. So this is the screenshot. It says, to be honest, 
I'm 42 and married. How do you originally say you're 19, but then jump up and double that, more than double that? Um, so she says, are, are you? Is this the photo of yourself? Um, he says, is that okay? I can send you a real pic, but what are you looking for? Um, she says, sure, a real pic would be good. Why, on, why are you on Tinder if you're married? And then he says, I want to find a um, cute girl and be friends with some benefits. She says, does your wife know? And he says, no. She says, gotcha. If you're not happy, what's stopping you from splitting up? He says, I love her. I just want a little more. Is that real bad? She says, would she, dis would she disagree to an open marriage? Um, he says, I'm not sure. Can you give me what I need? And she says, so you love her, but she isn't sleeping with you enough to meet your needs. Is that right? He says, yeah. She says, I'm really sorry about that, dude. He says, so you can't help? She says, unfortunately not. I'm not looking for hookups of friends with benefits right now. I'm a happily single woman who's not in a rush to unsingle myself. He simply says, okay. She does say, but I want to make sure you don't accidentally sabotage your relationship if you love her. Have you tried therapy or talking about opening the relationship? Cheating isn't the right thing to do. Surely there are better ways to get what you want. And he says, consider giving me some peaches, no strings. I can offer you something. Okay, I get it. Good luck. She says, I'm not a prostitute, but if you want prostitutes, there should be some in, and I guess she gives a city. And he's like, not money, LOL. He's like, oh, what was it going to be? He says, mentorship. If, if she gives up some peaches, he's going to give her some mentorship. Wow. What an exchange. And she's like, mentorship in what? You're funny, dude. But on a serious note, I'm worried about your wife getting hurt. Obviously, he's not worried. The fact that he is 42, saying that he is 19, means that he is not a stand-up man. I don't know what kind of woman he's going to run into that's going to be okay with somebody lying about being half their age and being married. This dude is delusional. Now, for some of the comments mentorship from a guy who pretends to be a teenager and cheats on his wife count me all the way out same <laughs> the op says yes it was too good of a scenario not to post on the subreddit mean good meaning bad also wanted to warn folks about catfishing and cheating on the app um mr Bress says could ask for an image and reverse search him try to warn his wife long shot but you never know and you could tell that this woman was fishing. Um, so that's the reason why I did this, because I was very amused by this. Jelly Bean says, discovered in June that my soon-to-be ex-husband of 36 years have been, has been using dating apps, and he hasn't worn his wedding ring in over 10 years. Various excuses. He's 58, but uses a much younger photo of himself on his Facebook profile. I have no idea how long this has been going on, nor how many dating sites he's been using. So folks, beware. People aren't always who they seem. The OP says, I'm so sorry that happened. He doesn't deserve you. Um, yeah. These people, they people say that there are tons of married men on these dating sites. Just exit the dating sites. I don't get it. But if you're on there and you need to send me some pictures, I'd love to use them for my nightmare dating profiles video. Blacklight says, accidentally sabotage his relationship. Sure, he's accidentally catfishing and accidentally hoping to find a gullible Delulu enough to fall for his thinly veiled tactics. The OP says, I was just trying to seem empathetic so he'd talk more. Um, Heather N says, Tinder is probably 90% fake profiles of people posing as someone they are not. Senator Rob Portman says, you'll miss out on the best 45 seconds you've ever had. Um, Aqua Diablo says, I mean, if his wife doesn't want X with him, why would anyone else? And the OP was like, darn. Um, Nikki Roses is like, mentorship. The F am I going to use that for? Um, Blom Holm says, he can teach you how to be a cheating douchebag, but bad at it. All right, y'all. I'm going to end it there. This is how the commentary was going.
I do want to throw in something positive. This post in Black Ladies says, I just want to share some personal wins. I recently started school to be a radiographer. I recently reconnected with an old friend who shares mutual goals for the future, and we're going to do pottery together. I feel like I'm finally coming into my own as a woman and developing healthy routines and habits, learning how to take care of myself and how to carry myself as a grown woman. I got my car fixed all on my own found my own mechanic and everything. I feel very optimistic for once about the woman I'm becoming. Just wanted to share some, share my nonsense thoughts. This is not nonsense. This is very cathartic. We need this sometimes. People use this as a jumping point to share some of your personal wins. What are some, some of the things that you have done that you are actually quite proud of? Let, let us know, shine a light on something your hobbies, something that you've accomplished, something that I accomplished, which I'm happy for. Um, I just recently moved to Nevada and I got my Nevada driver's license. We went to the DMV and we got that. We got, um, I got my voter registration put together for my Nevada um, address. And I am very happy about that. I want you guys to share something, something positive. Um, We needed to add this as a palate cleanser. So join the conversation. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.